praise be Jesus and Mary. As some of you know, I'm doing a little prison ministry down at the Monroe County Jail. And one of the inmates there who's not Catholic, but he's interested in becoming Catholic, is slowly working his way through the catechism. And as he does that, he'll underline um, certain passages and, and he'll ask questions for clarification if he doesn't understand something. And so one of the um, teachings that he underlined was in paragraph 183, where it says, faith is necessary for salvation. Okay, and he asked me, he said, what does that mean? Now notice, this is a smart man, right? We're dealing with something that's serious, salvation, and something that's necessary. And so he underlines this and he says, I need to understand this. Well, faith is necessary for salvation. In other words, supernatural faith is necessary to get to heaven. You cannot get to heaven without supernatural, fa supernatural faith. That's what that means. And that's simply according to the gospel where our Lord says in Matthew 16, 16, he who does not believe will be condemned. And then the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so we're talking about supernatural faith, which is a gift from above, something that is infused into the soul by our Heavenly Father. It's like the faith of St. Peter when our Lord asked, And who do you say that I am? And Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, notice he didn't say, uh, We think you are the Christ, or it seems to me that you are the Christ, because there wasn't any doubt. The Catechism in another part also says that faith is certain. He says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And our Lord responds, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Flesh and blood, your own human reasoning and intelligence has not revealed this to you, but it is a gift from my Father who is in heaven. So supernatural faith refers to belief in all that God has revealed and that the church proposes for belief. And now today we celebrate this Mass, votive Mass, in honor of the Most Holy Eucharist. And the reason why I chose to celebrate this Mass is because of a poll that was recently taken by the Pew Research Center. I don't know if you heard about this. And I don't know how accurate the poll is either. I hope it's not accurate because their results came up with 70% of Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Only 30% believe. That's a huge, massive problem. Now, what does the Church teach regarding the Eucharist? The Council of Trent says this, If anyone shall deny that in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist are verily, really, and substantially contained the body and blood, together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and consequently the whole Christ, but shall say that he is only therein as in a sign, or in figure, or virtue. Let him be anathema. Right? That's 70%, if the poll is accurate, of Catholics who are anathema. Now, we're talking about something that is a dogma and that must be believed, that requires supernatural faith, for sure. Just as St. Peter, when he looked at Christ, he saw a man, but he recognized 
the Son of God. So, same thing with the Eucharist. Our senses, what we see, is bread, the appearance of bread. And it is faith that reveals to us that it is the Christ, the body, the blood, and the soul and divinity of our Lord and Savior. Now, someone may say that there, there is a person who doesn't believe that, but they believe many other things. They believe in Jesus. They believe he's the Savior and the indissolubility of marriage. Maybe many other things that they believe. And you say, well, they have faith then, right? And the answer is no, they don't have supernatural faith. All of those other things that they believe, they don't believe because of this supernatural virtue that has been given them from above. They believe those other things as mere opinions which are in accordance with their own will. And that's it. It's not supernatural faith. And therefore, it's not saving faith. And so what is a person to do if they find themselves among this 70% and say, I don't believe in the, the real presence? Right? They should not say that they believe if they don't believe, right? That would be ridiculous. That would be foolish. God does not want that from us. No, we need to be sincere and authentic before God. Okay, he knows our hearts. So we don't have to pretend anything. But what they should do, in order to acquire this gift of faith, it is a gift. They should, first of all, pray. Right? They should come into the Catholic Church, kneel before the tabernacle, and say, Lord, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. So prayer is so necessary. Now, the next piece of advice may not be so obvious, and that is observe the commandments. In fact, when somebody comes to me and they have difficulties with some teaching of the church, my first two questions are, do you pray every day? Do you observe the commandments? Because if you are a person of fervent and frequent prayer and you observe the commandments, I've never met anyone who fits that description and has difficulties with the faith. So the second one is observe the commandments, especially the sixth commandment. Sins of impurity tend to cloud and darken the mind more than any other sin because the carnal man is not capable of understanding spiritual things. So observe the commandments. Pray, observe the commandments, and then secondarily, study the church's teaching, the catechism, the scriptures. If possible, visit Eucharistic miracles like the one in Lanciano, Italy. See for yourself. Okay, there are, our Lord has left us signs, these so-called proofs of what he has revealed to us. Read the lives and writings of the saints, the Eucharistic saints, St. Pascal Bailon, St. Peter Julian Amard, and really we can say all of the saints believed in the real presence and loved our Lord intensely in the most blessed sacrament. So for those of us who do believe, who do have faith, we too should come and pray and say, Lord, increase my faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.